Hi everybody, welcome to our vlog today. My name is Robert McDonald. I'm Vice President of Product Marketing here at One Cosmos, and I'm joined by Vikram today. Vikram, how are you doing? Hey, great. I'm doing great, Rob. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, Vikram Subramanian, uh, Vice President of Solutions at uh, One Cosmos. Uh, really excited to be talking to you today. All right. Well, listen, it's a pleasure having you. Uh, today, we're going to talk about single sign-on implementations and uh, inserting identity into uh, an SSO implementation, like an Okta as an example. So Vic, let's let's jump right into it. How do you view the balance between risk and convenience when it comes to single sign-on? You know, this is, this is a question that has been plaguing our industry for so long, right? Um, I mean, obviously we all know everyone's talking about passwords are bad. And so what did we do? We just uh, came up with another way of authenticating the user, which is put MFA on in, play, in its place and you're going to ask them to put a code in or have another device on their prem on their person or try and get something else out of them right just to make sure because the assurance that is there within the username and password is not there so what do we do we also add on other risk factors we evaluate 50 other things and 100 other things and um, all those signals put them together and then say, okay, with a reasonable amount of confidence, the user is who they say they are, and let them in the door, right? So that's the state of SSO today. And this is where it actually brings up the conversation. Really, what is the question that we're trying to answer with SSO, with authentication, with MFA? Are you really who you say you are? That is the question that needs answering. So we, I think, can help answer that question and add on to that experience with SSO. Okay, well, let, let, let's talk a little bit more about that. So uh, when you look at, you know, Okta or Fordrock, Ping, you know, whatever, how can organizations do more to protect themselves from cyber attacks? We talked about getting rid of passwords and MFA, right? Um, you know, should they get rid of single sign-on platforms completely? Or is there something that they can do to try to augment, you know, obviously keep the investment that they have? to, uh, but still, you know, become more secure as a net result. What, you know, what, what is it that organizations could do? Absolutely. I mean, think about it. The organizations have invested so much money in uh, really integrating applications or migrating from their legacy solutions to solutions like Okta, Microsoft, Fordrock, Ping, all of, I mean, all of our partners and uh, um, in the industry, and there are tons of applications that are out there. For us to go in and then say, you're going to have to migrate to another solution is going to be extremely irresponsible, which is where we want to enhance that experience and really give the users the ability to prove their identity as part of that authentication channel. So when the users want to go in, we have a multitude of ways where organizations can enhance the user experience. We've been talking about risk. We've been talking about passwords. We've been talking about anything that, you know, just from a pure security standpoint, something that is troubling a particular CISO. But more and more users um, and more and more users have begun to expect the user experience out of even enterprise IAM solutions. They want the experience. They want the consumer-like experience. They want to get in. They want to do their work. They want to get out. And uh, that's it. Don't bother me with all the 10 other factors that I have to list out. That is where yeah. I think we should be able to come in and really help our organizations there. Okay. Well, listen, on that note, let's, let's be a little bit more poignant in terms of what we're talking about here. What is it that one Cosmos can do to help augment um, a, a platform like Okta? So you said that, you know, replacement's not an option and you're right. I mean, there's too much money already investment invested in all that stuff. Um, you know, what can we do to come in and kind of stand alongside an Okta or another single sign-on provider um, and, and provide value? What is, it, what is it that we can do? See, this is where the true meaning of identity would come into play. And that's where the One Cosmos architecture of really saying an identity is a person comes into play for the authentication and the, um, and the SSO experience or the authentication experience. So One Cosmos what we are able to insert into the equation of really answering the question, are you really who you say you are, is biometric-based authentication and identity-based authentication. So what is identity-based authentication? Let's talk about that. So if I really need to go prove 
myself in the digital world. I am bringing out my government IDs, like my driver's license, passport, any of those national IDs, and I'm able to execute a transaction in the physical world. Now, right. what if we just translated that to the digital world? That is exciting. So this is where the concept of uh, the digital identity comes into play, and we are able to create a digital identity for a user by really taking a look at their government issued documents and then verifying them with the issuing authorities and creating a digital identity for the user. In Now, with this digital identity, now there are a lot of solutions that stop with just proofing. Now, this is where one cause makes it special. We are able to take this proofed identity or proofed document, create an identity for the user and help them store that identity within the wallet. With this identity in the wallet, they're able to execute transactions. This could be authentication transactions. This could be other transactions like uh, approving a particular transfer or money transfer or anything like that. And really our wallet is made to enable identity-based transactions, which include authentication. So when a user comes in to a website and they want to prove who they say they are, they're able to take their wallet and inject their identity into that, into that authentication scenario and truly prove who they say they are by use of number one, the government issued documents, and number two, by using biometrics. It's not mandatory to use government issued documents, but biometrics makes it very easy for the user to go ahead and prove who they say they are. All of us are used to doing face ID with the, uh, with the iPhones today. Everyone wants to just look at something and, hey, you know who I am. I mean, you just see me, then authenticate me. So that's what we are in, uh, inserting into the equation. This is how we can complement the experience that uh, organizations have with Okta and other SSO solutions today. Now, right now, Rob, you may want to ask, okay, what else can we do, right? There's gotta be more. And hey, does the user uh, does it have to go through identity proofing every time? Well. Not, okay. uh, not really. They don't have to go through uh, identity proofing every time, and uh, which is why we have the concept of the wallet. And what also that we have is the ability to issue verifiable credentials. This is something that a bunch of companies are already investing in, and we are already compliant with the W3C standards to issue verifiable credentials, to create a presentation, and also to go ahead and uh, use that in a particular transaction. So now we'll talk about verifiable credentials and as, part, as, uh, as a part of the roadmap uh, for something that companies can consider. But very simplistically in today's world, like I mentioned, we can insert identity into authentication and we can do this at every layer that the user is interacting with a particular organization. So let's start anything that is logical, which is their laptop. So. They want to go in and really log into their Windows app, a Windows system on the operating system. They're able to do that. It doesn't matter which version of Windows they are on. We're able to support a bunch of versions, which is true for many organizations that not all of them are upgraded and not all laptops are made the same, which is where we are able to digitize that authentication, include uh, biometrics, and the users doesn't don't need to remember their username and password. And we are able to translate that onto the web and interact with the systems like Okta and Vojrock and go ahead and uh, insert identity into the equation. You can go ahead and you can go ahead and take these signals that we can send or even take a look at what is the identity assurance level of the user, then make a decision. Do you really want to let them in to your applications or not? Okay, that's fair. So, listen, that was that was a great explanation in terms of what 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 users uh, or what organizations can do to try or what we provide organizations to uh, augment you know, or improve the security of their single sign-on. Uh, give me give me an example of what the experience looks like. So that was a, that, you know you did a very good job at explaining in terms of what happens, but talk about well, how does it work, right? So so you talked about logging into Windows. I'm assuming you can do it with Mac too. 
Um, obviously, there's the single sign-on providers, and then I'm assuming, Vic, we work outside of just the single sign-on stuff. There are other areas that we can cover too. Just quickly talk about you know, what that experience looks like from an authentication standpoint for the user when they come in in the morning. What does that look like? Oh, wow. Yes. We were talking about the user experience. Yes. So let's get, yeah. um, so let's remove ourselves from technology and really look at the experience. From an experience standpoint, what we bring to the table is something that all of us are used to when we go to restaurants today, which is to scan a QR code. So user comes in and they're, they're opening up their laptops, they're uh, they present. They can be presented with a QR code. Scan the QR code. Authenticate using biometrics. Show their face, or you know what? With our live ID, we're the only solution in the market that brings a smile to people's faces. Right? The only security solution that does that. Right? So smile, get in, get to work. Right? And that same experience is carried over onto the web. They can go scan a QR code, and they are logged in. Or you know what? Depending on the system they're logged into. Um, many other solutions can calculate the risk. Are you coming in from the same device? All of those things can come into play and they're not forced to log in when they log into web applications, right? So that is the experience that we can give to the user. The other thing that we can also do is we can also interface with the webcam and all that you need to do is take a look, right? And, uh, and then you're logged in. So those are all things that we bring to the table. And in for situations where your mobile phone is not allowed, you don't have a webcam, what do you do? This is where our support for pass keys comes into play, right? People can mm -hmm. utilize their pass keys, their sync pass keys, and go ahead and authenticate across the entire stack and move forward. So, so we, we do more than just the biometric, I guess. Well, I guess we do more than just the facial biometric is what you're saying there. So we have other ways that users can authenticate, whether that be via an app, Appless, Fido, pass keys, all of those things are all built into the app is yes. what you're saying. And users can authenticate in any of those ways. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Right. Like I mentioned, right? You go to a restaurant, scan a QR code, you get the menu. You go to your yeah. you go to your enterprise, you scan a QR code, you get a menu of options that you can choose from. Absolutely. Very good. All right, Vic. Uh, thanks very much for coming in today and uh, telling us a little bit about how you know how organizations can, you know, inject identity. Uh, into securing their uh, single sign-on implementation. Uh, I look forward to uh, talking to you again soon. And uh, everybody that's uh, watching, please make sure to take a look at our data sheet. Uh, we've got a single sign-on uh, better together with one Cosmos data sheet uh, that's available on our website uh, that you can get a little bit more information in terms of what we're talking about today. Thanks again, Vic. Thanks, Rob. Great being here.